Hey, welcome back. I'm Chris, and today, well, we're gonna take apart this pump. If you didn't see yesterday's video, go ahead and watch it again because I kind of failed miserably trying to put this, uh, what is it? I don't even know. It's, it's an under the sink laundry tray pump, if that's what you want to call it. It didn't go so well. So I'm gonna take apart the old one and see what was wrong and well, see what's in the thing. Let's do this real quick. Now, since this thing was like, well, my mom said it would smell like it was burning and it was smoking, I'm assuming it's gonna either be the motor, it's gonna be the float switch, or any of the wires, and the, anything that's electrical on it. Well, those all look pretty good in there. I don't see anything fried. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that water goes in here, it's pressure to where it moves a disc, creates a connection, turns the pump on, or turns the motor on, and the motor spins the pump. That's what I assume, but I'm not 100% sure unless I can open this. Kind of interesting. No patent number, can't look it up. But I, I, I would assume that's how this works. It would make sense. So let's keep tearing it apart. All right, so there's a rubber diaphragm. I hate to destroy this, but it wasn't working anyway. Something was wrong. So I'm not gonna reuse it, I, it's not reliable. So I might as well figure out what's in here. So there's a rubber diaphragm, fabric diaphragm, which just looks pretty well corroded to where maybe some water got in there. Not too sure. So water would come in into here, push down a little bit. There's this metal disc here that would push on the switch, make the connection and make everything run. Very interesting. Gave. I think my back gave. I don't really see much of anything burnt up on the motor either. I mean the motor does spin so that means there's nothing blocking inside the pump here. Huh. No, oh, is that it? Alright, come here. Look, look. There should be a bearing inside here. Possibly a bearing in here as well. Maybe. Maybe not. There should be a bearing on this end, but this end is really tough. So, my guess is this bearing stopped working, caused everything to kind of seize up, overheat, smoke, something. I don't know. That's the only thing I could see so far. So let me tear into this. Woo! That's interesting. We gotta. Yeah, that stinks. Not quite sure what all this is. Uh, if you know, leave me a comment, because I'm confused. And is there no bearing in here? I would have almost bet money there was a bearing in here. Made in USA, General Electric. I think this is aluminum. I might just be melting that. Well, that's gonna be my assumption that that's a bearing until somebody can tell me otherwise. I know, somebody's gonna be like, why did you do this to this motor? All you had to do was this and you would have fixed it. Oh well. Definitely the same system. The only difference is that collar in there, that I'm gonna call it a collar. The, the thing in there that I thought was a bearing is technically a bearing, but it's not a ball bearing. It's very loose in here. It, you know, it moves. It smells like oil, so this other stuff must have held the oil. You probably had to like maintain these or something and oil them every, I don't know, I have no clue, I'm guessing. Either way, that's what failed, that's what caused the motor to seize up, that was what my mom was smelling, you know, burnt stuff, and a little learning experience on how this stuff went together and how somebody made it. Very interesting. Throw it on a shelf for a different day. Anyways, I'm rambling, so. I'll see you on the next one.